You guys know who Peter McKinnon is, right? What's up? What's, what's up? What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon what's here. What's up, everybody? Of, of course you do. I don't know any photographer who watches YouTube videos who does not know who Peter McKinnon is. I'm primarily self-taught. So when I first started, I watched tons of his tutorials over and over and over again and learned so much from him. I mean, he was he's an incredible teacher and teaches all kinds of things that it was amazing. Now, I don't know if you remember, but he had something called a two minute Tuesday, which were always really cool little tutorials that he did in two minutes that were never actually two minutes. So I thought it would be kind of funny to create like a little joke on that and have a several minute Sundays because who knows how long they're going to be my videos. So anyways, welcome to a several minute Sundays. <laughs> Will Simpson here and welcome back to the, wait, if we're doing a kind of a Peter McKinnon kind of joke, we, let me start this over. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Several Minute Sundays. <laughs> that just doesn't work for me. I don't think that works for me. Anyways, shout out to Peter McKinnon. This is just fun. Uh, today we're <laughs> going to go over uh, a cool update that Photoshop did on removing. Every year they come up with major updates. One of the biggest updates for this year was a, uh, a removal tool that used generative fill and generative AI to remove distractions and other things to make it easier to, to handle those objects. So here's our first image that we're going to work on. Now we're going to go to the removal tool, which is down here, remove, you can press J on the keyboard, uh, but for some reason it's, it's selecting the, the spot healing brush, we want the remove tool. So let's click this. Then you go to find distractions. Now you see two options. You have wires and cables and people. So let's click wires and cables and it is going to remove, well it should theoretically move all of the wires and cables from this image. Now this is the first time I'm using this. So you and me are experiencing this for the first time unless you've watched other YouTube videos on this, then in that case you're ahead of me, which is okay. So we're gonna see what happens. Now it seems to be taking a wee bit of time, so I'm gonna speed this up and get to the result. Three, two, one, and we are done. Now, if I'm being honest, that took a surprisingly long time, almost about 10 minutes to do. But if I'm also being honest, it did a way better job and a way faster time than I could ever do. Now there are a few little points here. If you noticed, we have some lines here, uh, some, some weird colorations here, uh, again, some weird colorations over here and some just some odd things. But overall, it's not that bad. It's definitely workable. Now, a couple of points for this stuff. So I'm going to completely undo what we just did. So Command Z. So there's a lot of lines here. This is a pretty difficult setup here. To make this easier, to do this in a different, for, uh, different way, uh, a little bit less destructive and more uh, manageable, you're gonna create a layer here, a blank layer, just like this. You're gonna go to your remove tool, just like we just did, and you have a couple of options. Auto, this will let it select between um, the just remove and the, using the generative fill, kind of lets Photoshop decide. This is use generative AI, and this is off. So this is just the remove tool, which you can use, I'm assuming, without Wi-Fi, but it's not gonna be as uh, accurate or as good. But a couple of different things you can do. Now. With this, with this new layer, we need to make sure that sample all layers is checked. That way, it's going to sample the layer below, otherwise it won't have anything to sample. So we're gonna do this again. You can also uh, adjust your brushes here and all of this, just play around. There's a lot of things here and it's pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna do this again with generative AI on with our layer mask. Now again, I'm gonna speed this up because it's gonna take a little bit. So here we go, three, two, one, and okay, all done. Now, that took another about eight minutes. So these, these delays are quite substantial, but again, it's doing better than what I could do myself and probably in a much shorter time. Now, the reason that I did this, this layer, is because now I can create a mask on this layer using the brush tool with black as the foreground, I can paint back parts of these, this image and then I can adjust it as needed. So I can bring back this spot or I can fill it another way, but it allows me to reconstruct parts of the image that maybe the generative AI didn't do so well and then I can correct it myself. So that is one benefit of doing a layer on top of your image and select layer, selecting those layers when you do the generative AI remove. So overall, this is a very, very cool feature that 
in simpler images will probably work really well. I invite you to test it on your own images and see how it works. But let's get on to the next thing that this remove tool is pretty cool at. But before we get into that, my goal for this video is a thousand likes. So if you could quickly hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, that would be super, super helpful. Also at the end of the video, I will link a bunch of goodies, uh, presets, freebies, downloads, all of my gear, everything in the description. So make sure to stay to the end and check that out when you're done. So let's go into the second feature of this removal tool. And for that, we are going to open this image right here. And this is from a wedding that I shot a while ago. And okay, that's fine. We don't need to worry about any of that. And we're going to just come over here and put on a quick little preset. Good, nothing fancy. Not even gonna worry about putting this massive edit on it. Actually, I'm gonna lower the exposure just so it's a little bit more um, workable. There we go. Okay, good, fine. That'll be done for now. Open. And we are going to remove these people. So first thing we're gonna do is do our layer. We're gonna to go to the remove tool here. We're going to make sure sample all layers is selected, find distractions and people. Now this should find all our people and it should highlight the people that it thinks it should remove. Let's see, hopefully this is faster than the other thing because, well, I don't like it when it's slow. I like speed. We're in a, we're in a world where we want everything to happen right away and we forget that things take a little bit of time. We are uh, instant gratification generation. <laughs> the IgG. So now it highlighted all of these people. Now this is great. So now we can come up here to the plus sign and we can make it bigger by using the brackets and we can highlight additional stuff that we want it to remove. Good, so that's perfect, that looks good. Let's do this here. And let's say it, we wanted to keep this person here, well we could press Alt or Option on the keyboard to get the minus sign, see how it's highlighted the minus sign, or we could come up here and just select the minus sign. Whichever one you have selected, pushing Alt or Option will give you the opposite one. So now we have the minus sign, we push Alt or Option, we'll get the plus sign, and we can add that one right back. Let's, put the, let's do that there, good. And here we go, once we have our selections done, find distractions, we have it with people, good, it found them, generative AI is on. Actually, let's do this one with generative AI off and press the check mark and we'll see what the difference is. So this should be much, much faster, but let's see how it does. Okay, so that seemed to work okay. I don't like this and I don't like this. I found the remove tool alone works decent, but not near as good as generative AI does when there's complications or more advanced removal. So that was no good. So Command Z, we'll remove all that. We're gonna do it again. So remove tool, find distractions, people. Perfect, it should be faster now because it's already gone through it once. And good, make sure everything is selected that we want to select, perfect. Beautiful, good, and here we go. Generative AI on, check mark, boom. And again, we're just gonna speed to the result and I'll tell you about how long that was. Okay, so that took about four minutes, definitely faster than the power lines. It is a lot more simple. Uh, one thing I do notice is the color is off. Now, here's the thing. I would probably do all of my remove options prior to color grade. So I did this after color grade and I found that when you do that, sometimes the generative fill can't get the colorative's right. So I always recommend doing all of your removals and stuff prior to your color grade. So I'm not gonna give that a negative because that's on me. However, this did a really good job. It did a much better job than the, uh, just the simple remove tool as opposed to the generative AI. The, the AI did way better than the remove tool. Anyways, that is a quick overview of these two features. And honestly, they are super, super good. If used correctly, they will save you so much time in editing. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this explained the two, two, two features uh, quite well. And I hope you enjoy using them. I hope you enjoyed my several minute Sundays. I actually have no idea how long this video was. I'm gonna estimate about eight, nine minutes. So several, that, that falls into place. And if you haven't already, remember the goal for this video is a thousand likes. So hit the like button, subscribe if you, all, if you haven't already. Here's two videos that I recommend that I think you'll really enjoy. Click on one of them and I'll see you over there. Have a good one.